There's a certain level of cruelty that only a group of children can muster. When one is made to wear a retainer brace at age eight, it was surely an unpleasant sight, the metal headgear wrapped around her face. There were lots of stories about the night of her ninth birthday sleepover. Kids say she willed her metal brace into massive jaws, incising her way through the house. But it was no fault of her own. Mandible Judy isn't a nice name for a quiet little girl. This would be the end of our property and the beginning of the Muskegon State Park wetlands. It stretches on out, oh, about 10 more miles, but you'll get to your rocks before that, about a mile in. Right around here is where the hardwood starts. Salinity from the seawater leaching in. It's, uh, the cedars can't take it and die off, leaving just barren trunks. That's what they say. Some folks think it's beautiful. Myself, I feel a little uneasy walking through here alone. All those dead souls just watching. Dad, come on. <laughs> I don't know about that, Mr. Howard. Folk tales and myths. Rocks with special powers. <laughs> you can laugh. But there's a reason people tell those stories. Because they're superstitious. Son, you know you'd be hard-pressed to convince these people of anything without showing them some solid evidence. But you spend some time around here, and you start believing in things. Dad, Mr. Darcy doesn't believe in that stuff. He's a scientist. A rock man, you said? Yes, sir. A geologist. Nothing more solid than rocks. Although they do tell stories sometimes. These rocks are old, and they've got some stories. That's why I'm here, Mr. Howard, and I'm lucky to have a top geology student to help out. Gonna need it. It counts as credit, and I really don't mind getting out of the classroom, Mr. Darcy. You'll see the rocks just down the end of the causeway, about a half mile or so. Kenny knows where. Thanks, Mr. Howard. He'll be home about 5.30. All righty. Well, that's impressive. That big one must be three stories high. And unfortunately, the shack is up that hill. Hmm. We'll have to carry the instruments there. Let me get a few pictures first. Once we get the gear loaded in, we'll take a walk across the rocks. Find a few good spots for samples and... Don't worry, we don't have wolves. That's just the wind through the dead cedars. Although some of the Otomers will tell you it's the mudscog. But that's just a dumb old story. I've heard he's a celebrity around here, like Bigfoot? Uh, a muddy swamp-dwelling Bigfoot. I won a prize in second grade for a drawing of the Mudscog. Anyway, stupid folktale. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't fault people for wanting to make life a little more interesting. And that swamp looks about the right place for a Mudscog. That one's heavy, let me get it. No problem, Mr. Darcy. I have it. Oh, worst part of the job. You lead the way. Okay, Kenny, good work. Thanks, Mr. Darcy. What time tomorrow morning? Around 8.30. We'll get an early start and see what we can accomplish. Okay. See ya. Good evening, officer. Is everything all right? You're gonna have to move. Ambulance is coming in. I heard him say seven dead. Renee and Bo are okay. I saw them, but seven little girls murdered. Oh my god, right on our block. Those poor children. It was a birthday party. Excuse me, did you say murder? Seven people? Who? I don't see how she... Oh, it's just too horrible. Arthur, were you in there? I, I was out back with Bo and Renee about 40 minutes ago. And... We, we heard screaming. The, the door was locked, so Bo kicked it down. But they were all dead. They, except Judy. She... their he heads... Oh, now don't. You... 
You did a good thing. She she cut off their heads and and raged them up on a shelf. Oh my God. Who would do that? Why? Let us walk you back home, Arthur. Okay. My God. Good morning, Dr. Fusi. Doctor? Dental Services of East Haddam, can you hold for a moment, please? Doctor? It's okay. I, I'm all right, Bonnie. It's just the terrible news. Ugh, it's awful. I heard it on the local news. Dr. Fusi, you look tired. Can I help? I just need a minute, Bonnie. Dr. Fuzzy, the little girl, the survivor, Judy Caterbeck, wasn't she a patient of yours? She... <sighs> I just need a few minutes. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Of course. I'll go. I'll be in the front. Hello? Dental services of... of East Haddam? Yes, Mrs. Beeling. Let me see. Yes, the third is open. Uh, how's 3.30? 4.30? Yes, that's fine. <sighs> the town of Mudskagen. Nine dead in a crime as perplexing as it is grisly at a nine-year-old's birthday party. Police say they have no suspects, but are questioning Renee and Bo Caterbeck, who appear to have been in the backyard with a neighbor when the crime occurred. Their daughter, Judy Caterbeck, the only survivor of the eight children, is currently under psychiatric evaluation. We are holding the Caterbecks for further questioning, but I repeat, we have no suspects at this time. The crime occurred between 4.50 and 5.12 p.m., according to a neighbor. This is a very... Oh, God, I can't. Families. Doctor? Stupid kids. All that work wasted. The treatments wasted. Continuing tape 38. The purpose of these tapes is to document the progress of my research into the efficacy of enzyme treatments to express nascent genetic traits in patient 1174. Despite recent setbacks, I will be pushing forward as soon as... Bonnie? <gasps> Bonnie? is acting really weird. I mean, the murder last night. He was yelling in his back room and throwing things. Are you all right? Uh, I'm okay. I'm just a little shaken up. He scared me. Do you want me to come over there? I can make an excuse and I'll... No, I I'm okay for now, but I get off at three if you can pick me up. I just... He said some weird things, and he's recording tapes about his... He called it research with one of the patients. I didn't hear it all, but there's something else... Do you remember when I was hired, I replaced a girl named Catherine? Dr. Fousey says he fired her because he felt he couldn't trust her. Well, I've been finding notes and things that she made on the calendar and note paper. Most of them are just about appointments and patients, but one note was different. Well, what did it say? It was kind of a shopping list. Milk, bread, peanut butter, jelly, stuff like that. Then it gets weird. Gas, blankets, lantern... And scribbled across the bottom, it says, Last Apt, F-109, and then three exclamation points. I don't know, Bon. I mean, that could be a lot of things. Okay, well, there's more, but I'll have to tell you later. 
the unfortunate occurrence at the cater back home last night will not stop this work. The stupid children. The little girls at Judy's birthday party must have been teasing her again. I warned her parents to keep her away from those kids, but it's too late. It's unlikely that they will let Judy alone now. She'll be sent somewhere where I cannot see her and there will be no more enzyme treatments. I should have seen it coming. I should have known that she would snap. The treatment seemed to cause her some amount of stress and anxiety. I'll just have to find a new patient in Mudscoggin. I have to find out what it is about that environment that makes, brings out the, the, the expression of an atavistic phenotype. It will require more study. I've got to sleep. I've been here all night trying to see a way forward. That is all for now.